Okay, the human factor revolutionizing the way people live with technology. makes vividly clear how we can bridge the widening gap between people and technology. Let's see, if I had to pick a chapter. <clears throat> Let's see, a threat to our quality of life. Why is technology so out of control? Let's get physical, getting the design to the body. Let's see, I would think I would pick page 29. Interesting picture there. A traditional reductionist approach to organizing human knowledge each discipline studies the world from a roughly independent perspective, creating a silo effect. Two antiquated cultures in modern times, the mechanistic and humanistic worldviews. Why is technology spinning beyond control? There's one explanation we can dismiss outright. Designers don't deliberately build uncontrollable technology systems technological systems. Uh, traditional disciplinary boundaries create a division between the human and technical sciences, so neither the humanistic nor the mechanistic views can clearly see the relationship between people and technology. Well, I need specific examples. Ironically, the strength of the wizards, the often brilliant designers of high-tech products and systems today, is also partially responsible for their downfall since they have so much scientific and engineering expertise they tend to think that everyone knows as much about technology as they do. People who design things like playing with gadgets and figuring things out. It's a game to them. The more they do it, the easier it gets for them. Some even like reading owner's manuals. <laughs> okay. Uh, the lessons learned in the aviation industry are slowly being heated by healthcare sector. Some profound changes are gradually taking hold. Management matters, building, learning organizations. A few years ago, my mother went to see as a surgeon about her varicose veins. She'd already undergone three operations for this ailment over a 30-year period. The surgeon examined both her legs and told her that while both had problems, he recommended operating only on the left leg this time because it was worse shape than the right. She went to the hospital, had the operation. What's her surprise? He was working on the right leg. Although he said he'd only work on her left. Well, maybe he decided to do both and didn't bother telling me I'm going to not be going to say anything. What do I know? I have to trust him. After all, he's a doctor. He won't trust that. You know his light right from his left. But the surgeon continued to draw on the right leg. She reconsidered, she decided she better say something. <laughs> no, are you gonna do both? No, we're just gonna do one. 
You're supposed to do the left, not the right. That's what you said in your office. You're going to operate on the right one. Surgeon surprise. Insulted the information. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Oh. Yeah. That's why they keep asking you. In the, you go like to the eye doctor. It's the right one, right? It's the left one, right? What's this? A model showing how financial and psychological forces can create behavior gradients that can cause work pressures to migrate systematically toward the boundary of safety. Visiting professor of aeronautics and astronautics at MIT. You know, this looks like more of a business book than a technology book. Drinking water or deadly poison. The Walter to E. coli breakout. Huh. Okay. Well, this is not really the book for me.